Hi, everyone, and welcome to Studio Jake. I, of course, am your host, Jacob Airy. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your patience as I've moved, and so my studio is still being set up. I appreciate everyone who has stuck with me, who has subscribed. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Like this video here on Studio Jake. We talk about all things nerd. We talk about Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, anime, comic book stuff, movies, TV. What, whatever comes your way, I like to cover it. It's a lot of fun. Pop culture is a blast, and I'm here for it. Before we dive into the topic, I wanted to bring up... I write novels. This is the first novel that I ever published. It's called Cacophony, A Tale of Faith and Fear. It's a paranormal novel about a group of demons trying to corrupt the humans in this town and the angels sent to stop them. I also have a fantasy series. So this is part one and part two of an upcoming trilogy. I'm working on book three now. Don't worry, I won't pull a George R.R. R. Martin and never finish it or, as Tolkien did, start a sequel and just never go back to it ever. No, no, I will complete this trilogy. This is the first book, Seven Royals, all good things about a group of fairy tale characters who have to come together to save their kingdoms from an evil force. This is the sequel, Breaking the Stars, where another enemy rises up in this sort of fairy tale fantasy land. If you're if you're a fan of C.S. Lewis or Tolkien or even Akira Toriyama, I really think you will especially like these two books. You can find all my books on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, digital downloads as well, except for this one, which you can only get at BookLocker.com if you want the digital download. It's exclusive to that website. So, what do I want to talk about today? Well, there's a couple of things going on, but I wanted to hone in on Star Trek a little bit. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but Star Trek has kind of been ruined lately. You know, and I'm not, and I'm not saying everything was perfect after Gene Ronberry died, and um, I believe the guy's name was Bergman when he took over the franchise. He was an acolyte of Gene Roddenberry, and he made some mistakes. Uh, Voyager wasn't the the survival story it should have been always. I believe the Critical Drinker has pointed that out. Star Trek Enterprise should have focused more on being a prequel, setting up the universe ahead going into the original series, and at times it kind of would take some right turns, and of course, Star Trek Nemesis was a terrible movie. There's just no defending Star Trek Nemesis. But all that said, you know, Star Trek, you know, pre the modern era, so let's say pre Star Trek, the Kelvin timeline. Now, I'll be honest, I like the Kelvin timeline movies, the trilogy. I see them just kind of as a what if. I don't really take them seriously outside of that, but I do enjoy them for what they are. However, since this guy named uh, Alex um, Kurtzman has taken over Star Trek, Star Trek has gone from sort of this optimistic, hopeful sci-fi epic, and it's kind of become like this dreary, nihilistic, terrifying story arc. It started with Star Trek uh, um, Discovery. We saw it in Star Trek Lower Decks and also with uh, with Strange New Worlds, which was a promise to return to that optimism, but then it just got bad writing and it kind of basically stayed the, stayed the same as Discovery and Picard. And they released the season three trailer for Star Trek Picard. And here we have a character played by Michael Dorn named Worf. Now, when Worf was first introduced in Star Trek The Next Generation, he was part of the security team. He was under uh, Tasha Yar, who, of course, was the original chief security officer at uh, on, on board the Enterprise. And then when her character was killed off, Worf got promoted. He became chief of security, and he's part of this warrior race called the Klingons. And they've been a part of Star Trek since the beginning. The Klingons have, have always been a part of Star Trek I, I, during the, the time... Uh, of the original series and in, in between Star Trek and the Next Generation, Starfleet actually had a war with the Klingon Empire. And uh, it, it kind of ended where both sides just uh, made a treaty thanks to, the, the, uh, thanks to a certain incident. But my point is the Klingons are a warrior race. They're really big on like sort of this almost feudalistic view of honor. What does honor represent? Honor is only found in the fight, only found in the battlefield. And... It um, became apparent in Picard season three that they're t and that they're totally veering from this because this was part of Worf's character. He, Worf had actually killed honor killed people before in the past and in you know and in revenge because that's who he was as as a person. Well, in Star Trek Picard season three in the trailer. 
they show Worf is like, oh, I'm a pacifist now. And it's like, what on earth are they doing? Why would Worf become a pacifist? Like, I understand if he goes from sort of this this warrior, because in Deep Space Nine, he's uh, part of that crew during what's called the Dominion War. So I understand if they kind of want to make him where, oh, I, I've seen war, I'm still a warrior, but I'm kind of I'm kind of more I've I've pulled back myself because I've seen more war than I want to than I want to see. But no, that to go all the way to where I'm a pacifist. It just goes to show you that these writers have no idea what Star Trek is. The, these people that Kurtzman are bringing on board to write these shows, they're quite frankly embarrassing. I, I gave up on Star Trek Picard after season one. Same with Lower Decks. I tried to get through Discovery. Season two was only um, redeemed by Anson Mount playing Captain Christopher Pike. That was the only good thing about that show. It was it was terrible, uh, not acting wise, I guess, but the story arcs, the storyline, the whole feel of the show. It didn't feel like Star Trek, and people are saying, "Can Star Trek be saved?" One thing about Star Trek is this whole thing where there's time travel. So it's Star Wars time travel. It was kind of introduced in Rebels. They have this thing called the Veil of the Force where you can access different timelines. But so far they haven't showed how that will affect the Star Wars galaxies. But with Star Trek, time travel has always been a part of it. In the original series, the Enterprise, I think used, I think they said they used the gravitational pool of the Earth to go back in time. They went back in time in several of the movies. Star Trek Next Generation, they famously went back in time to the Old West. So time travel is a, a a part, sort of, of Star Trek. A big part. I said sort of, but it's a big part of the, of the stories. So if Kirksman ever gets fired, I don't know what it is about these TV studios. So Paramount owns the company that owns Star Trek. And I don't know what it is where they bring in these people who continually fail and and give them promotions, give them contract renewals. It just doesn't make sense. And especially with the fans saying, we don't like the Star Trek. In fact, they've had to re-release older toys um, in newer boxes, <laughs> but older toys of characters like Captain Picard from Next Generation, like Captain Kirk, like characters from the Mirrorverse, because they can't sell the products from Star Trek Discovery, from Strange New Worlds, from Lower Decks. It's kind of embarrassing, and it's really... I used to be part of this Facebook group I left because it was clearly just filled with Disney shills, and anytime you tried to clap back at them, the moderators would come at you, but then when they would attack you because you liked um, how it was originally that you liked the idea of continent, continuity and, can, and uh, adherence to a canon... Uh, they wouldn't do anything about it. So I finally just left this group. And I realized most of them were too young to really know what Star Trek was. And that's a shame. You would think with the invention of streaming services that we, people would be able to go on and see, oh, wow, Star Trek was actually really great even back in the eight, late 80s and 90s and into the early 2000s. Star Trek was a great franchise. And like I said, I'm not saying everything was perfect. It definitely has some criticism and, and whatnot. But still, I would I would take Star Trek Enterprise over Star Trek Discovery any day of the week, hands down, because at least it maintained that sort of optimistic look. One thing that was interesting about Enterprise is it showed that humanity did want to go explore. We did want to go see what was out there, but we were being held back by the, the forces that be um, in the galaxy, because this is before Starfleet is, is, or excuse me, this is before the United Federation of Planets, which Starfleet is a part of, was formed. So, anyway, it's uh, neither here nor there. My point is, we should implement that time travel idea, and Enterprise kind of hinted this with the idea, they did a temporal cold war where there were forces with uh, abilities to time travel more casually, that they were kind of in a, in a war, and that uh, they wanted to influence the past, and uh, in, in Star Trek Enterprise, Captain Archer, who is the who who is played by Scott Bakula, he actually uh, did this. He reset the timeline, uh, and and but they make it clear it's the original timeline. Captain Archer um, fixed it basically with with his actions. So, and and from my perspective, if they ever fire Kurtzman. This, that's what they should do. Whoever takes over after Kurtzman just needs to reset the clock. 
So what they need to do is sort of have like almost like an in-game type phenomenon. Um, in Deep Space Nine, it ends where Captain Sisko, uh, he goes into this wormhole that has aliens live there. And because they live in a wormhole, they don't perceive time like how we do to them. There is, um, the past, present, and the future all exists at once. They don't experience linear. They make that clear in the pilot. So they kind of recruit Sisko to go like on this journey with them. What I would do is have Sisko emerge from this. He would come out and he would say, hey, I see something really bad is going to happen. Now, in the Star Trek Discovery, this incident happens called the burn. And it's where all of the dilithium in the galaxy just burns up suddenly. And it, so it kind of throws the, uh, the Alpha Quadrant into chaos. And I think also the Beta Quadrant, which is where the Romulans are. So dis the Discovery is the only ship that has faster than light capabilities because of this. So... What I would do is the ins Cisco discovers that the event that causes the burn is going to happen much earlier uh, because of the bad guy. Say, let's just let, who who would be the best? In my opinion, the best bad guys are the Borg. So I'm going to say the Borg. They're going to cause an incident that'll make the burn happen faster. So Cisco recruits characters from different timelines and you can pull someone from discovery. You could pull someone from strange new worlds. You could pull someone from enterprise, someone from next generation and Voyager, the original series, you know, bring a bunch of these characters together, have them use uh, the defiant also from deep space nine, maintaining that theme. Also the Delta flyer, which is from Voyager. It was like their high speed shuttle that they could use. It was almost like a, a fighter jet among shuttles, have them use that as well. And they go and they stop this incident. The timeline restructures itself. And then you have one of the characters say everything has changed. And that's how you end it. And that's how you reset Star Trek. Now, I, I don't trust Paramount to do this correctly because they are intent on hiring guys who are creatively bankrupt, who instead of trying to add to the canon, they want to stand on the backs of great people like Gene Ronberry in order to develop their own self-inserted characters, their own self-inserted issues, as opposed to examining what Star Trek was, what it meant to people, and how it influenced science fiction going forward. It definitely, Star Trek definitely influenced me. Now, I obviously am too young to have watched the original series, when it was airing, but every week we were watching Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Voyager, Deep Space Nine I didn't really care for. I watched it later, liked it a little better than I thought I would. Same with Enterprise. I didn't like the pilot of Enterprise. By then I was older so I could choose for myself what I wanted to watch a little bit more. And I didn't really like the pilot of Star Trek Enterprise. So uh, I didn't go forward watching it. I watched it later. For, briefly, all the Star Trek shows were on Netflix. Now they're on Paramount+. Plus. But So I went back and I watched Deep Space Nine and Enterprise, and I actually really liked them. And then when they announced Star Trek Discovery, which would take place during the war with the Klingon Empire, I thought, oh, this is going to be really good. But it wasn't. <laughs> and so that's what I would do. I would I would just in-game this, this thing. I would... Um, that's I would use that plot point from Deep Space Nine to bring everyone together and then reset the timeline. And hey, if you want to, I have nothing personally against the actors or actors who are in New Trek. So that's, that's this era starting with Star Trek Discovery. I don't have anything against those actors. What I would do, though, is focus on an entirely different crew that doesn't have any connection to any existing property and if you want, bring in actors from those same shows, but they're playing maybe ancestors or relatives of uh, the characters from the future, and then you can start to tr change things. So maybe show a different way that they have first contact with the Ferengi, which is in Star Trek Enterprise. Although that one... Uh, or, you know, other things. Show them, uh, you know, do the Romulan War, but do it differently than it plays out in the books. But keep it close, and so that way people can go, okay, I know this is a new thing, but we're going, but I under, and I understand that it's it's connected and, uh, and inspired by the original. And, yeah, so that's my simple solution on how, how I would fix Star Trek if, if Paramount ever gave me a call, which I know they won't. They probably won't ever see this video. But I've always been a fan of Star Trek, and I know a lot of people say, hey, the new stuff kind of ruins it for me. 
And I understand that. Um, Star Trek Discovery definitely ruined Star Trek for me. I would encourage you, if you're feeling this way, just go back and watch the old stuff. Do it again. Don't watch Star Trek Nemesis. That'll, that'll, that'll only put you in a bad mood. But, you know, I know some people don't like some of the Next Generation movies. I don't have that opinion. I like Generations. I, I like um, Insurrection. I like First Contact. I especially like First Contact. I think it's an up-there Star Trek movie. But... I see Generations and and Insurrections more as elongated episodes as opposed to uh, theatrical films, but I still enjoy them for what they are and their place. Go back and watch all of those, have fun with them, and if you have to, just just pretend that New Trek is fan fiction. That's what I have to do with Star Wars now. That's what I have to do with Batman now. That's what I have to do with Marvel now. It's just the reality that, that we live in. And you know what? Sometimes we get some nuggets. Certainly the MCU has been going poorly, but then we had Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, DC uh, DC films, they've kind of been going pl- poorly, but then we had Black Adam. Yes, I know it's controversial to say, but I liked Black Adam. I thought it was a fine film. I thought it was good. A better example might be The Suicide Squad. DC was going poorly, and then we had The Suicide Squad. So, The Suicide Squad, not, <laughs> not the one with Jared Leto as fake Joker, the, the one later. So... You know, keep that in mind. There are nuggets out there. There is hope. Um, hang on to it and uh, enjoy it. And like I said, if you have to compartmentalize, do that. I think you'll have way more fun and you'll enjoy Star Trek better. And if you have an idea on how you would fix Star Trek, let me know in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. If you liked that video, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up. And I would be honored today if you would subscribe. No matter what platform you're watching on, please subscribe. Hit that follow button. Share it out all over the place. And check me out on some of my other socials. I've got links in the in the description below. Also, check out my website, studiojakemedia.com, and consider supporting this channel on studiojakemedia.locals. Dot com. It really helps uh, smaller creators out. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.